Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's yacht is the third and smallest of the Outremer line that we've looked at, made famous by Sailing Le Vagabond. We're looking, of course, at the Outremer 45. So this week, we're going to review its specifications, pricing, and layout against three similar new yachts, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say, navel gaze at an innovation or adjustment that might make life on board a little more uh, comfortable, have a look at the used market, three to five year old comparables, and finally give it a Dave score compared to all the other yachts we've looked at so far. Hovering high above Vancouver, British Columbia, we fly across the Atlantic to the west coast of France and the home of last week's yacht at the Privilege Yards in the Sambles d'O. From there, we head southeast across France to Le Grand Mont and the shipyards of Outremer and Gunboat. For our wine pairing this week, we head south down the coast to Narbonne and the vineyards of Gerard Bertrand. Our pairing this week is Gerard de Prand Domaine d'Aigle Pinot Noir. One of the highest situated domains in languedoc Ruslan, with a terroir simple, similar to that of Burgundy, the estate is cultivated in a biodynamic agriculture, certified Demeter since 2018. Domain d'Aigle Pinot Noir 2020 was rated 93 out of 100 by Decanter, and I can tell you my first taste merited that. The grapes are harvested by hand and transported in boxes to the cellar. The grapes are destemmed and sorted in order to eliminate all the vegetal parts of the bunch. A pre-fermentation cold maceration of five to eight days is carried out with regular punching of the cap. At the beginning of the alcoholic fermentation, the cap is punched down and then little by little, in order to better control the extraction of the aromas and the tannins, it is replaced by pumping over. The pressing is delicate with pneumatic press. The melancholic fermentation and the matur maturation of 9 to 12 months take place in French oak barrels and you can definitely taste it. The wines from different barrels are blended after racking. Oh, you'll like that. Hope you like the boat as much. Let's go have a look. As with all Outremer's, she has beautiful lines. She has those wonderful classic Outremer bucket seats at the, at the aft uh, with a, um, a tiller uh, as well as the standard uh, great wheel helm steering. Um, you know, she's made famous by Le Vagabond, so there's not a lot I can say about the looks. You've seen her over and over. But she is a wonderful, handsome looking boat. She's uh, maybe a little dated at this point in time with the introduction of the 55 and now the 52, but I'm sure they'll rectify that. Anyways, she's still a gorgeous looking boat. Looking at the specifications now, uh, as we have a quick look at comparables, Bally 4.6, Neil 47, the Utremer 45 and the Nautitech 44 open, you can see that the upwind sail area is equivalent to the Nauditech and just below the 4.6. Neil 47 is the lowest. Uh, moving on to the cabin top, you can see the typical, well, not typical actually, because you've got the uh, more traditional canvas partial bimini uh, on the 45, whereas you don't see that at all anywhere else anymore. Um, but the, the, the beam of her is strong. I apologize, I don't have a line drawing for three of the four, uh, but we did our best to give you a sense of dimension uh, across the four of them. Now, heading into the saloon, uh, the saloon uh, admittedly um, is fairly small, although I would say it's bigger and feels bigger than the, 45, the, uh, than the uh, Naughty Tech Open. Um, the uh, obviously not as big as the 47 Neil, but that's deceptive uh, because of the main um, deck uh, 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 master berth. Um, Bally 4.6, of course, ginormous because they've linked cockpit with saloon there. 
Um, but there is something about the 45 when you walk into that saloon, and we'll get to that when we're doing the tour. It, I don't know what it is. They do it there, and they do it in their berths. You know they're not huge, but they feel light and airy and really, really comfortable. You can also see the aggressive stance <clears throat> of the, uh, the pontoon outlines here, especially the dive down to the cabins. I mean, uh, look, at, look at those pontoons and how, how uh, slim they are. Uh, the, uh, the berths, uh, of course, are fore aft. Um, there's simply no possible way you could squeeze in any kind of a thwart ship format in a 45. Well, uh, certainly not a, a performance 45. Um, but again, they, they feel really quite comfortable and the sense of quality is, is strong. Actually, I would have said that they, the berths feel larger than the 47 Neil. And they really shouldn't because, uh, I mean... It's about the same width at that point in the, uh, in the pontoon, but uh, there you have it. Um, moving now uh, on to the specifications. Now, I have uh, gone to the dark side a little bit here. I'm adding lines to my chart. Uh, so uh, Kirk and uh, Mark and uh, Clive, you've all had your impact. I, I actually look at more than how comfy, cozy, and elegant it would look at like. So be proud of yourselves. Um, looking at the base prices, uh, and I want to emphasize, these are base prices in euro. Uh, there is nothing on them. You could not sail these away very effectively from the factory in this configuration. That's why when we do our used comparables, we add about a 50% premium for all the stuff you're going to put on there. The other thing is these are base prices... Uh, at the factory, so a factory pickup. There's no North American delivery or anything on here. And basically with the madness in logistics, in commodity pricing and in exchange, don't take these for gospel. These are simply to show a relative difference between several comparable boats. So looking at that, our Neil 47 uh, is the best value by a hair over the Naughty Tech 44 Open. Um, the Bali 4.6 is the next, uh, and then, um, and, and those are all within reach of each other. The Utrumer has about a 200,000 euro premium on it. Uh, and, you know, looking across these, I, I would say it's fully justified. Uh, as we go down the list here, length overall, uh, the Utrumer 45 is the longest at 48 feet. Uh, the uh, draft is the, the uh, least on the Utramer 45, so there's your performance in more ways than one. Um, your displacement is the lowest at 8.7 ton, and that's by quite a bit. That's like 20-30% less than anybody else. <clears throat> and then um, as we get down into tankage, uh, of course the Bally leads the pack at 800 liters each. Uh, Naughty Tech is next at 500 and 600, uh, and then uh, Neil 47 has 300 uh, fuel and 600 water. Utramer has a little more balanced, 336 and 407 liter uh, fu fuel and water, respectively. Hull material, uh, I would say the Utramer 45 uh, leads the pack with e-glass, uh, carbon fiber reinforcements, uh, vinyl ester coating. Uh, solid glass below the waterline and a foam core. <clears throat> uh, the system voltages, you can have a quick look across there. Now, into the, the, the geeky stuff that I'm starting to understand. Uh, sailor area to displacement or the power of the vessel, the Utramer 45 is a solid winner at 27.17 with the next closest, uh, believe it or not, the Bally at 22.6. Uh, this puts it into a general category of extreme racing boat. Uh, the displacement to hull length, again, the very best on the Utramer 45, 70.22. So this is a relation of heaviness, if you will. Um, and it is miles ahead of anybody else. The next closest would be the Neil 47 at 105. And then the other two, Bally 4.6 and uh, Naughty Tech, are sitting at 130. 9 and 135 respectively. Uh, the Bruce number, 
uh, is uh, 1.31, again, the best of the bunch by a long shot. At this point, I'd like to ask you, if you're enjoying the content, hit a subscribe, share this out with a couple of like-minded folks, and uh, give me a like if you could. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. On board, what would Sylvia say? So we're starting in the saloon. And, you know, the, the thing about Outremer is that everything feels completely finished, polished. Uh, it, it feels production in the best sense of that word. It doesn't feel slapped together. It doesn't feel like somebody handmade this in their backyard. This feels like significant technology and skill and capability and thought and quality control has gone into it. Look at those rounded corners um, and, and that beautiful seat sitting at the forward-facing helm. No silly little uh, stool that you have to sit on. Uh, looking at navel gazing now uh, at something that might help us with all the toys on board, um, the uh, hydro generation. It seems to be among the sailing public and those in the know the second best thing to um, solar. Uh, with wind being so far back, nobody wants to touch it for noise and complexity and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're going to do um, hydro generation, of course, most folks, when you hear about hydro generation now, they're talking about. Uh, the ocean volt system, uh, they're talking about, you know, the parallel hybrids where they're a full um, um, drive system that turns into hydro generation when the propeller goes the other way and you're sailing at speed. In this case, we are talking about something completely independent of that that can be retrofitted to any boat. And the best one I've seen out there by a long shot is Watt and Sea. And you know me, I hate stuff tacked on. So to me, Watt and C and their uh, 600 unit, which is a, a fully self-contained unit that goes, it's installed on the bottom of the boat, completely hidden from view and feeds then into your power system. Now you can see here uh, at about eight knots of boat speed, uh, you're getting 16 amps of input, which isn't bad at all. If you'd really like some solid reviews on hydro generation, I'd recommend you have a look at Sailing Uma uh, and our Canadian and, and Haitian friends there uh, who have um, been actually doing a lot of work on their electric drive. They're using uh, an ocean volt um, and they talk a lot about the hydro generation they get and how good it is. But this is a really solid system. You start producing power at three knots of boat speed. You get up to 500 watts at eight knots of boat speed. It's a fully self-contained system, easy to install by a professional. And you don't have maintenance. You don't have stuff hung off. You're not pulling it up, dropping it down. Uh, it's a really elegant looking system for your boat. Back into the saloon. Again, looking around, every element of finish is elegant. The uh, forward-facing nav is executed beautifully. Let's head down into the owner's cabin. Look at the stairs. I always love looking at the, the trim and stuff. There's your beautifully upholstered uh, daggerboard casing. Moving forward into the master berth. Uh, again, it's amazing to me. It feels so light and airy. You can't get it in a video. But when you're standing in there, you're going, wow, how do they make it feel so comfortable in such a small space? One thing I don't really like is the fact that there are no closet doors. I'm a freak for that. I hate open shelving, uh, and, and I would really have to deal with this somehow. Um, very small area for washer dryer, but you have one, and it is a 45-foot performance yacht. Um, really nice execution into the head. Um, you have a beautiful shower there. Not so certain about a curtain versus a glass door, but, you know, easy things to deal with. Um, again, everything looks so elegant, that matte finish on the bowl, uh, beautiful overhead ventilation. The ventilation in this is tremendous. The hatches almost seem oversized to me uh, in, the, in the ceiling. Um, little touches like the, the wood backing on the, on the shower head looks really nice. The hardware they're using is really solid looking. Um, again, every corner nicely rounded. There's your escape hatch. Your stairs look great. The, the flooring material is terrific. <clears throat> um, 
and you have a, the, the ceiling elements there do have a nice soft touch part to them. Heading down into your guest areas, uh, again, uh, everything feels solid, elegant, thought through, professionally done. Um, your, uh, your escape hatch here is in the uh, washroom shower area, which is probably a good place for it, given their tendency to leak. Um, moving into the forward cabin, again, look at, the, look at the light you have, even in front of the door, and then you enter the cabin. This is a small cabin, and even on the video, you can see how it feels big. Again, not real excited about no closet doors, but am excited that there is closet space. Um, so, and, and then again, the, the storage under the mattress, several people, including Neil, don't put a door on that. Not excited about that. But look at your solid wood edging around the entry there. Um, everything about this space feels finished, polished, and professional. Heading back up into the cockpit, we're going to make our way outside past the crowd a little bit here. Okay, heading up to the helm. You have obviously the great wheel, but you have these super sexy bucket seats. I'll never forget Riley on Le Vagabond sitting in one, holding the tiller, looking down into the sunset and saying, everybody should have an opportunity to sit here once in their lifetime. I agree with them. Your controls nicely accessible up on the top. Although if you're in foul weather, you're going to have to get out into it. You don't, they're not down below what, where when you put the cover over, you could access them. Um, the uh, the cockpit very very secure um, and uh, you know great for kids and pets. Uh, you can keep everybody in there. Great area for extra solar. Uh, it's kind of a, a throwback. I'm not sure what I think of the uh, the canvas uh, wings on on the Bimini. I, I sort of like them. I think um, great canvas all the way around. It was a bit of a blustery day in the Grand Mott here. Uh, but again, look at your uh, seat covers, your seating surfaces. There are no wrinkles. There are no rumples in any of the materials. Everything is done extremely well. Now, I myself would replace that uh, cockpit table with a solid teak with a high gloss, but that's just me. I'm a little high maintenance. Uh, now, looking at, I, I love the idea of a tiller. I just love it. And here you have both. You got the great wheel and you have the tiller and you have those seats and you have the um, those beautiful dagger boards uh, and you have reasonable room. I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the, the, the sub 50 uh, size range, but I got to say that I, I probably couldn't get Sylvia onto here long term, although I might, but I could live on this boat for sure. They've done such a nice job. It's such a high quality looking vessel. Um, as we walk forward, uh, you know, you don't have recessed hatches, but uh, who cares? Uh, you know, if, if you're going to stub your toe on those all the time, you probably shouldn't be on a boat. Uh, the, those fine bows, uh, I mean, your uh, amas, or I'm not sure in, in catamarans if you call them pontoons, but the entire shape of this machine is so sleek and long and beautiful. I am surprised they're missing uh, princess seats on here. Um, maybe that's just an owner preference. Love the positioning of the life raft. Very easy to access. Um, one bugaboo that I have on everything except for uh, ML and a, uh, and a, priv a privilege is uh, the lifelines are lifelines, which to me are death lines. You're just high enough to help you do an audio comedy each over the side. Uh, looking at the... Um, uh, the side of the, the aft here and walking up the side, look at the little details, the concave uh, element in the hull design. Um, you know, it's just, I like what the owners have done with their logo on the back of the seats there. I think that's terrific. Um, I would probably go with a composite Elangeron, uh, but uh, I mean, this is such a classic, beautiful looking vessel. Uh, you know, I, I find myself uh, now on second thought falling more in love with it now than I did when I first toured it. I, I guess I've gotten to know the Utremer brand a lot more and what they do in their engineering and my admiration has just soared the more I've, you know, done these videos and looked into them a fair bit. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, please hit subscribe, share it out, and give me a like if you could. Thanks so much. Okay, moving into pre-owned comparables. Our first yacht is the Katana 47. Uh, we're looking here at a Outremer 45 with a sail away of about 1.1 1 
1.2 million US. Uh, an 017 Katana 47, uh, you're looking at a 760. So about 60% of that price. Uh, I personally like the look of the Outremer so much more. Uh, I know that is shallow. Uh, I also like their interior layouts and the way they touch things up. So uh, again, if I had the cash, I would probably go the new Outremer. Our next boat is going to be the Fountain Peugeot uh, Seona 47. Uh, again, uh, 1.1 to 1.2 on the Outremer versus about 900 on the o, uh, uh, 019 Seona 47. The Seona 47 is an attractive boat and it has a lot of benefits. It is not a performance machine, but it's not a, a, a lead sled either. Uh, I would probably be leaning, uh, I know that I'd get Sylvia onto the Seona a lot easier. So I'd probably go the Seona with that kind of a discount. Uh, 2021 Naughty Tech 46 open uh, at uh, 600 um, and, uh, versus uh, 1.2, so half the price, but uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I maybe uh, the 46 Open has the aft helms, but they're awfully exposed. It is, I mean, nice woodwork. Yeah, I mean, that's a heck of a discount, half the price. I'd probably lean towards the Naughty Tech 46 Open. Balance uh, 2016 451 at 600. Um, that's a sexy looking boat. A little dated. But sexy, um, I, I give it a, a really strong look. Uh, there are a lot of competitors and a lot of pre-owned boats in this segment. Uh, Lagoon 46. <laughs> I mean, of course, completely different animal at whatever tonnage this is. Uh, 900 for a, a 21 versus uh, 1.2. I definitely go with the Utremer. Okay, now moving to the Dave score. How did she score? Well... Um, you know, again, this is a sub 50 and I wouldn't feel comfortable really getting, uh, Sylvia onto anything outside of that 50 category. Uh, although it is 48 feet. I keep thinking 45, but it is 48 feet. Um, interior, uh, I, I'd give it a seven. Um, it's not as elegant as the 55, uh, but it is very nice. The exterior, give it a solid seven. Um, again, not quite the, the design elements and everything that the 55 has, but it's good. Interior, uh, give it a six just because you're a little more cramped. And the exterior on comfort, give it a, give it a six. Um, <clears throat> the quality, give it a nine. I mean, it's just a tremendous vessel. Uh, on performance, I give it an eight. Uh, probably could do even higher now that I'm familiar with... Uh, Displacement over sail area and displacement over length and all that good stuff. Um, lazy Sailor, it, it gets a seven. I mean, everything comes back to that helm. It's it's an easy boat to single hand. Condo six, it's just sort of too small and sparse for the major condo element. The uh, 55 does a better job on that. Uh, geek score six, there's nothing really geeky or interesting on it. Uh, it's just a really solid, good boat. Value for money, definitely a seven, if not an eight. I mean, it's it, for 1.1, 1.2 uh, for a brand new boat. It's uh, it's a really, really good boat. For Art of the Region this week, we've got uh, Boats at Color by Andre Durain. Andre Durain is best known for his contributions to the developments of Fauxism and Cubism, two avant-garde movements from the beginning of the 20th century. Durain was born in June uh, 17, 1880 in uh, Chateau, just outside of Paris. He began his training by attending painting classes under French symbolist Eugene Carbert and the academic, uh, at the Academic Carrière, 1898 to 1899. While at the school, he befriended Henri Matisse, and in 1900, he met Maurice de Valmec, who, with whom he later shared a studio. The three often painted together and were instrumental figures in each other's artistic development. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's boat. Uh, I am, my, my love and admiration and appreciation for the Utremer brand has simply grown the more videos I've done. 
and uh, this boat is absolutely no exception. I can hardly wait to see their new 52. We may do sort of an advanced peek at the drawings on that later because I just can't stand it. It's gorgeous. Uh, but have a great week. Uh, please share this out and let's see you back at Camp David next week for another Naval Gaze. Thanks so much.